Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video I'm talking about traditional witchcraft, specifically about the books that I would recommend for anyone just getting started on this path. <music> Traditional witchcraft is a favourite topic of mine. I love reading books on this subject, I find all of them really interesting, but there's definitely some that I would recommend for a beginner more than others. Now, traditional witchcraft is a path in and of itself, and almost every author that writes on it is on a slightly different version of that path. It's a topic that is really, really interesting and is maybe not as popular as it should be, but the interest in it is definitely increasing. And so I wanted to cover six of my favourite books on this subject. Some you will likely have recognised, others perhaps not. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll have some more books to add to your to-read list. If you have any books on traditional witchcraft that you would recommend, feel free to put them down in the comment section. I would love to check them out. And I'm sure others would love even more recommendations as well. So with that being said, let's get started. The first book is really, really famous and it deserves it. It is so good. I love this book and I read it so fast. I'm a really slow reader, by the way, but this one I read so fast because I could not put it down. It is The Crooked Path by Keldon. This book is phenomenal. It is called An Introduction to Traditional Witchcraft and it is exactly that. It's one of my favourite books on the subject, especially for beginners, but anyone can learn something from this. Even someone who's been part of other paths of witchcraft for a really long time, you'll likely get something out of this book as well. Now the information on this reads as follows. Learn to walk the path of traditional witchcraft. Part the thorny bramble and take a walk along the bewitchingly mysterious crooked path. Within these pages, discover a wealth of hands-on tips and techniques to begin your journey into the realm of traditional witchcraft. Learn to weave a powerful personal practice that is informed by folklore and grounded in your own location and natural landscape. Along the way, you will find valuable information regarding the tools, rituals and spells of this fascinating tradition, together with lessons on connecting with deities, familiar spirits, ancestors and the spirits of place. With supportive advice and encouragement, Keldon provides everything you need to successfully navigate your own path, helping you master even advanced practices such as hedge crossing as you perform your day-to-day -day experience into a life filled with magic and spirits. This one is really, really beloved to me. I've loaned this to people because I love it so much and it's definitely one of my favourite witchcraft books full stop. I just really find the way it's written is great for me and it is important that all of my opinions on these books are just that. They're my opinions. I am dyslexic and I do feel the need to mention that because my issues with some books are not going to align with other people but I do find that the writing style in this is really easy for me to read. It flows and that massively helps me to love a book alongside everything that's in it. This one has so much information inside. This is just taken from the contents. You've got a section on defining traditional witchcraft as well as the historical development of it. Magical basics, traditional witchcraft tools, rituals of traditional witchcraft, spellcraft, the witch father and witch mother, ancestors, familiars and fetches, the other world engaging with the land, plants, animals and stones, seasons, the weather and planets, as well as establishing your own traditional witchcraft practice. Inside, you also have different rituals and techniques that you can carry out. So it's like a learn and do kind of book. The hands-on aspect to it is really good if that's how you learn, but you can learn a lot from it without doing all the exercises if you just wanna learn more about the topic as a whole. So this one is very, very good, but ultimately they're all really good, otherwise they wouldn't be in this list. The next book is one that many people bypass, but they really shouldn't because it's so good. This is Treading the Mill by Nigel G. Pearson. This one reads as follows. First published as Treading the Mill, Practical Craft Working in Modern Traditional Witchcraft, this popular book by Suffolk traditional witch Nigel Pearson returns as a revised and expanded new edition with additional chapters, revisions to the text, and is complemented with new imagery including photography by the author. Hallowing the compass, tools, calling the directions, content of the rite, closing statements and thanksgiving, honouring the directions, opening, dismissing the compass, place of working, examples, wand crafting, what is a wand, aspects of traditional tree lore, dryads, types of wood, some native trees, 
cutting wood for magical purposes, creating your wand, finishing off your wand, a hallowing rite, spell crafting, what is a spell, verbal charms and chants, herbal magic and wort cunning, simples, potions, oils and lotions, elemental and nature magic, sensing the sacred, history and background, practical applications of incense, incense making, incense materials, incense blending, formulae, a rite of offering, entering the twilight, some definitions, personal protection, focus and attention, accumulating power, trance working, soul flight, spirit working, spirits of the natural world, spirits of home and hearth, concerning familiars, the fetch body, the ancestors and the mighty dead, the elven kind and fairy folk, approaching the powers, the god, the king of the wildwood, walking the way, the lord of the mound, entering the maze, the mastering of light, calling the master, the goddess, the great queen, addressing the dame, the black goddess, watching the stars below, approaching the power, a rite of self-dedication to the old power, selected bibliography and suggested reading list. And no, I'm not mistaken, that's actually what the back says. It's one of those books that doesn't really hold back, it just tells you what's in it right there and then. There's no theatrical information on the back to draw you in either, you're interested in these subjects, or you're not. And it's one that I think maybe does it a disservice. The fact that they don't share that much theatrical information or enticing information probably puts people off. But I don't even have to go over the contents list because that is the contents list. It is massive. Inside you have all kinds of ointments, bits of mythology and tradition in there. And it's one of those books that I would say is a step above the crooked path. This is more of a very beginner friendly guide to it. It's very easy and streamlined to work your way through it. This one is maybe a little bit for people who already have a grasp on witchcraft outside of traditional practice and they're wanting to look a little bit more at this specific path and they already know a lot beforehand. This one is a little bit harder to get through for me personally but the information was well worth it. It's also, if it's interesting to anyone, published by Troy Books which if you're anything like me and you will basically buy any book from Troy Books because you know that they will be good, this could be one to look at even if the information on it does not seem that enticing. Next up we have the Holy Grail book when it comes to traditional witchcraft. Probably the most popular of all of them. This is Traditional Witchcraft by Gemma Gary. This book is definitely the most famous and honestly it deserves it. It's really good. The full title is Traditional Witchcraft, A Cornish Book of Ways and that's really what this focuses on. When it comes to traditional witchcraft you will find there are so many books on the subject and they're all going to vary slightly and it's because traditional witchcraft is an adaptation of pre-existing folk magic that's usually really localised. The difference between the folk magic in Cornwall and Essex is massive, and this is just in England. If you go further afield, it's even more different. Just county to county, traditional witchcraft will vary based on the customs and practices of the people that came before. It's often based on what was required. If you were in a mining area, the magic was different than if you were in a fishing area. If you were a farming area, it would be different still. And so all of these books are going to be slightly unique based on the experiences and the location of the person involved. The book that is probably the most general would be The Crooked Path by Keldon, but this one is obviously about Cornish witchcraft specifically and there is a lot of emphasis on the Museum of Witchcraft and Magic which is in Boscastle, Cornwall. If you want to learn more about that I will leave my video of my trip there linked in the description box. So the back of this one reads as follows. Traditional Witchcraft, A Cornish Book of Ways is a 21st century version of traditional Cornish witchcraft of the kind recorded by Hunt, Bottrell and others. This is no neo-pagan or modern Wiccan manual, but rather a deep drawing up into modern times of some of the ancient practices of law and magic practiced by the white witches, charmers, conjurers and pellers of the Cornish villages. Their presence was still current when the 18th and 19th century antiquarians and collectors recorded them, and although the 20th century largely put paid to their activities, nevertheless their law never completely disappeared, and it continues to provide inspiration for practitioners today. 
Gemma draws on this knowledge, not only from published material, but also from experiences and workings of wise women and country witches living today. Topics include the cunning path, the dead and the underworld, the buka, places of power in the villages and landscape, the tools used by the cunning folk, village cunning, substances and charms, and rites of the years round. This book gathers much material together, some of which has not been seen in print before, and thus provides a source book of magical workings in Cornwall today, which will be an invaluable reference. And yeah, this one is really, really good. It is so interesting. I've like dog-eared it. I apologise if you hate dog-earing pages. <laughs> I basically dog-ear all of my books unless they're really, really special editions. There is just so much in here that is really interesting and also the classic illustrations that we see in all of Gemma Gary's works. And it's just, it's just a really good book. And there's also images in here as well, which can really help paint a picture, not only of the experiences that have gone, but also to aid in visualizing the items that are referenced throughout, which I think is really interesting. So this one is an example of a spirit house, which is then referenced elsewhere in the book. It's just really good, honestly. And it's definitely one of my favorites of traditional witchcraft books. It's not my favourite favourite, we'll get to that later, but it's definitely up there. The contents of traditional witchcraft go as follows. Cornwall's Museum of Witchcraft and Magic, The Cunning Path, The Dead and the Other World, The Booker, Places of Power, The Tools of Cunning, The Witch's Compass, including The Hearthside Rite, The Compass Rite, and The Troyal Hood, as well as a ritual for closing. The trade, including the Hand of the Wise, planetary virtues, magical substances, charm bags, workings of protection, healing, love, good fortune, spirit magic, and the weather, as well as versatile ways. Rites of the Moon and the Fury Nights, initiations of the cunning way, glossary, bibliography, indexes, etc. And then this one also has an entire section of photographs and illustrations that you can reference if you do want to learn just a little bit more about each one, which I think is really nice. And this I'd say is one for people who are more on the newer side and perhaps even just want to learn a little bit about the law and the history of the tradition without actively practicing it for themselves. It's one of those middle ground books where it's great for practitioners, but it's also great for people who just want to learn about an interesting subject. Next up is one for those who live across the pond. This is Besom, Stang and Sword. Now this one is a collaborative book. It is written by Christopher Oropello and Tara Love Maguire, and it covers a form of traditional witchcraft. On the front it says, a guide to traditional witchcraft, the sixfold path and hidden landscape. And this one is the one that I would recommend for people who live in America specifically, because the authors are working traditional witchcraft in America, which does make a difference. A lot of these books, as I will go into in a little bit, are focused on specific regions. And even though the witchcraft is transferable, those regions are fairly significant to the foundation of that practice. And so when you've got a book like this that is written specifically by people who work in an American environment, that is gonna have an impact on perhaps how well you resonate with that book. This one reads as follows. Traditional witchcraft is not about where you are from, but where you are. Regional traditional witchcraft teaches people to find their craft in their own backyards, in the uncultivated land, the wild unknown, and in their ancestors, rather than in ancient foreign deities or a neo-pagan style religious form of witchcraft. The authors founded the Black Tree Coven in 2014 and set out to forge a modern approach to traditional witchcraft for a new era of praxis. Besom Stang and Sword is a landmark book that presents their introduction to regional traditional witchcraft and a fresh, spirit-based, non-religious guide to the spiritual practice of witchcraft in a modern context. The material presented in this book is adaptable to any region in which the practitioner lives. So this one, it's important to mention, comes from their own style of practice, so their own group, which is called the Black Tree Coven. And so a lot of the workings are taken from that tradition that you can then adapt into your own practice. Now, this one has another fairly extensive contents list. It covers traditional witchcraft, besom, stang and sword, magic and spells, divination, herbalism, the black tree, the hidden landscape, necromancy, hedge witchery, the witch's sabbat, the lunar year and the crooked path. 
and it is another one that has different practices inside. So it has different sections like these where you can do active workings whilst you are reading the book, which is not something that's in all of the books in this list. Some of them are more conducive to learning and then practicing later. Some of them are more aligned with learning whilst practicing, and it just depends on your specific style. Now, the other thing I like about this one, it is found in others as well, not just this, but at the end of each chapter, they have reading lists so that you can go on to learn even more. And unsurprisingly, a lot of the books in the reading list are ones that are also in this book list anyway. So there's a lot of crossover between different books, especially ones that were published later. A lot of the others came later referencing the earlier books. So yeah, this one is really, really good, really enjoyable read. It's not my personal favorite out of them, but I think it's definitely going to be great for a lot of people. The next book is my absolute favourite. It's not that the others aren't good, it's just they're all good for different people at different levels in their practice, and this is just the one that I would read hundreds of times over and still find new information in it, and that is A Deed Without a Name by Lee Morgan. This one is criminally underrated, no one seems to talk about this, and they really, really should. This for me is one that bridges the gap. It is a little bit more detailed in its information. It's less a practical guide to and more a mix between history and adaptations. And there's information in here that really allowed me to connect the dots to understand where traditional witchcraft comes from and how the folk magic that it originated from fits into the world of the people who practiced it. This one is a little bit more academic, history-based in nature, while the others are a little bit more how-to, and ultimately it depends on what you want out of a book. But the information on this one reads as follows. The field of witchcraft studies is continually overturning new information and research about traditional witchcraft practices and their meaning. A Deed Without a Name seeks to weave together some of this cutting-edge research with insider information and practical know-how. Utilising his own decades of experience in witchcraft and core shamanism, Lee Morgan pulls together information from trial records, folklore and modern testimonials to deepen our understanding of the ecstatic and visionary substrata of traditional witchcraft. Those who identify themselves as traditional tend to read a lot of scholarly texts on the subject. And yet, still there remains a vast gulf between this information and knowledgeably applying it in practice. This book aims to close that gap. And oh my goodness, does it! <laughs> this was one of those books where I got it. I basically looked at other books that I've already purchased and went, I want to find something similar. So I went through the similar books list and I found this one. And it was not rated as much as a lot of the others. And I was like, oh, well, I'll give it a go. Boy, am I glad that I did because it answered a lot of questions for me about how the folk practices fit into the world that they were a part of. We are looking at these traditions from a modern perspective with modern understandings. And that doesn't always work for deeply understanding how it connected with the people at the time. And this one just immediately connected dots that I had not connected before. And it was just really, really fascinating. And you can see that from the contents list. This is definitely more history heavy, information heavy than some of the others. So the contents list contains the following. A deed without a name, marked as other, the key that fits no lock, becoming yourself, including fetch beasts and familiars, devils, familiars and fetch brides, foremothers and fate women. The Crossroads Pact, Wailing for the Demon Lover, The Suckling Imp, Hedge Crossing, Here Be Dragons, The Other Self, Drenching the Ghosts, Riding the Beast, Riding Plants, A Tale Shared, The Mystery of the Sabbat, Shaped in the Forge, The Waters Below the Hills, One of the Dead, Ritual Space, Including Discovering the Fetch Beast and Donning the Mask. Acquiring the Magical Assistant, Fairy Doctoring, Skin Fairing, Calling to the Devil, Making Healing Water, and A Rite of Necromancy. And it's honestly packed with a lot. As we can tell, it's one of the smaller, if not the, no, not quite the smallest, but one of the smallest books in this list. 
and yet the contents list is massive. There is a lot of stuff packed into this little book and it is one that I would recommend for people who want a slightly different approach to traditional witchcraft. Maybe they just want to learn more without practicing it themselves, just want more context. That's what I would recommend this one for. And then lastly, we have one book with two different covers. Technically, it does not describe itself as being a book on traditional witchcraft. However, it is a book about adapting folk magic into modern traditions, which is pretty much what traditional witchcraft is all about. So this one is Folk Witchcraft by Roger J. Horn. Now it does have two covers. This is, I believe, the new cover, and this one is the old cover. I am not sure how I ended up with both of them. I think what's probably happened is I've read it as an ebook and then I went, oh, I really want to get that. I did, and then I saw this one again and thought it was a different book, and so I got the other one. I'm not sure, but I've ended up with two copies. Pretty certain, though, that this cover is the new one. So if you're looking for it, this is the one you'll find. This one is described as being a guide to law, land, and the familiar spirit for the solitary practitioner. So the information on this one goes as follows. Complete with practical exercises, descriptions of craft theories and models, hand-drawn illustrations, and a beginner's working grimoire, Folk Witchcraft provides the student witch with a concise yet thorough introduction to the old craft that is firmly rooted in the past and adapted to the present. Experienced witches will deepen and enrich their practices by connecting more fully to traditional magics from hundreds of years in the past. Learn how to master ecstatic methods of spirit flight described in the old witch law, celebrate the turning of the seasons with traditional rituals, work powerful traditional charms such as the witch's ladder, the poppet and blessing and cursing by gesture, discern the magical properties of herbs and plants without relying on tables from books, gain practical guidance from the spirit world, utilize old craft incantations, remedies and recipes, connect with the old ones, the ancestors of folk witchcraft, experience shape-shifting into various animal spirit forms, craft herbal oils, powders, tinctures and infusions, interpret incantations, charms and sigils received from your own familiar spirits, research and hone your own lore and grimoire-sourced magical practices. With over 50 rituals, charms and exercises, Folk Witchcraft offers a refreshingly simple approach to the craft that is non-dogmatic, flexible, and rewarding as a regular spiritual practice. This one is so good. I love this one. And it's also so easy for me to read. The font is nicely sized. It is a how-to guide. And I love this one. The contents goes as follows. You have a section on lore, land, the familiar spirit, basic rites, sabbat rites, conjurations, various charms, as well as a conclusion and a bibliography, always a loved section for me. And each of them includes other sections, which is super duper useful. So there's a lot, a lot in here. And each section also has practices in it. So just an example, on page 110, you have a practice on the Sabbath on this page, which I think is just really good. It's a practical guide that also offers a lot of information. So those are my recommendations of traditional witchcraft books for those beginning their journey in this practice. There are so many books out there on traditional witchcraft. In my own collection, I have probably a dozen more, but I do find that some of them are better suited for beginners than others. Often Oftentimes, after an author has published their first book on the subject, the others really start deep diving. And so if you want more videos on traditional witchcraft books, let me know the topics you would like to learn more about, and I'll try to give you some recommendations that I've read from my own collection. If you have any traditional witchcraft books that you love, feel free to post them in the comment section. It will give me way more to add to my to-be-read pile that's already substantial. I should probably start working through it. And I'm sure it will help give other people more inspiration as well, because there's lots of people who are beyond beginner traditional witchcraft books, and they want something a little bit juicier. And so hopefully some of those recommendations will massively help. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It really means a lot to me. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to post them down in the comment section. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try to post magical content every single week. So with that being said, I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Hello. Um, you might notice that I look the exact same in 
three weeks worth of videos. And that is because I have been sitting here for nearly three hours. <laughs> and I just decided I am going to film three videos today. Was that a good idea? No, my butt hurts, my back hurts. I wanna stand up and walk around, but I am absolutely determined to get this done because this is a video so many of you have been asking for for months. It is 9.20. <laughs> it is gonna be nearly midnight by the time I get this done. I just have a feeling it's gonna be at least an hour. <laughs> all the books. I am a little bit doo lally right now, honestly. I feel a little like I'm, like I need a break. But we are persevering so then I can get some food and then I can edit tomorrow because there is a storm happening right now. And honestly, I don't know what the weather's gonna be like tomorrow. My battery's dead. Great. <laughs> I've been filming for three hours and 39 minutes oh my i think this is the biggest filming session i've had in a very long time and actually the second video that i filmed no the third video that i filmed the one about the um traditional witchcraft books that actually wasn't even a plan for today's video. I actually intended on filming a completely different video. And then at the last minute I was like, oh, I know what I should do. I was requested to do this on the last live stream. I should probably do it. So <sighs> I need to sit somewhere else <laughs> and I need to refill this because it's basically empty and go and get some food because I'm hungry. I would film another one, but honestly, I think my back might just give out on me if I have to sit on this uncomfortable sofa anymore. <laughs> and also, I don't think that's necessarily healthy. So I think I'm gonna go and reread A Deed Without a Name. I'm not even joking. I got this out. This was the book I was looking for in the live stream, by the way, how I was asking a book that I really loved on the subject. This was the one I was after. I got this out and I'm like, I have to read it again. I have to, I love this book so much. I have to read it again, that one and um, folk witchcraft, this one. I've never read the second edition. I've read the first edition, I've never read the second edition, so I need to give that a read. Okay, I need, I need to do something else. I have to. That is what we're looking at for today. Three hours and 42 minutes. That is bonkers. Mm -hmm.